But this also ties into number four, which is should I do lightweights and high reps in order to get cut or toned? My most livid word ever, you are not a printer. Time on the board, a hole here. It means I've got no hair, but I just don't care. Thank you again for joining me for another video. What I'm basically trying to do recently was one of two things. One, YouTube like massively went crazy on my channel recently and demonetized a lot of my videos. So I'm now trying to make very nice content in order to get back in YouTube's good books. But also, two, I am trying to pretty much put to bed every single general fitness gym question you could possibly imagine. Because then that way, hopefully, I've just got like this big treasure trove of information that eventually people can find if once again YouTube allows them to do that. So I did some Googling, I went through my own messages, and I basically compiled a massive montage, not the right word, but a big pile of questions that most people asked, and I'm going to answer them right now. And remember, just because I said it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Take my information, Google it, ensure you educate yourself. Some questions maybe even need to take to a doctor. This is just a starting point for you as you go on your fitness journey. Don't walk like that, you be an idiot. So yes, these are the 20 most common workout questions answered. With me, Joe the Fitness Mascot and Stanley the Gange Giraffe. Number 20 is how often should I work out? And really the answer to this should be how long is a piece of string? Because you are going to have to trial and error it to see what works for your body. Ties into everything we've just said. But a very good rule of thumb, because you want to make sure you get your rest and recovery days in there as well, is you if you watch my channel before, you're about to explode. Push, pull, legs, rest. Push, pull, legs, rest. And you do that. So it kind of goes over seven days, but it basically allows you to train every single muscle group twice a week. And look, if you want to try and do more, you you absolutely should. If you think, hey, that's too much for me, I need an extra rest day, you should do that as well. But so many people think they should be training every day. So many people thinking they should only be training three times a week. Maybe you should do. The only way is to try it. But again, I really do think you want to be working muscle groups twice a week. I'm going to move on very quickly from this. So we did a whole video on this last week, but it had to be in there. So it is. Number 19 is how much should I lift? Now, this kind of comes into your ego and your arrogance. Because so many people assume that when they do go to the gym, the Fitness Palace of Love, get your t-shirt now, they have to lift a certain amount. Otherwise, they don't deserve to be there. That's like going to school for the first day and go, well, I haven't got my diploma. I should be expelled. Just figure out where you can start comfortably, make sure you're focusing on form, and then slowly increase the weight. Progressive overload is the best way to build muscle, which essentially means if you bench press the bar on week one, when it comes to week two, make sure you're now bench pressing 2.5 kilograms on each side. Doesn't matter if somebody else is doing like, you know, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 on each side, and you're only doing 2.5, one day maybe you'll be there, but even that guy has to start somewhere as well. So you should be lifting what is comfortable and what allows you to have good form. Number 18 is will crunch crunches get me abs? The answer is no. A good diet will get your abs, but you should still do crunches because you're going to work your core and the stronger and tighter and more powerful your core is, the better all your lifts are going to be, especially compound lifts. And compound lifts are in many ways the foundation to building mass. Number 17 is should I avoid fat to not be fat? That's like saying should I avoid walking into the road in order not to die? There just isn't a simple answer to this. Because you are going to need some kind of fat in your diet, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Obviously, it's going to be goal dependent. But yes, you should be having some healthy fats in your diet, such as, well, where can you get it from? You can get it from avocados, you can get it from peanut butter, but beware of the calories. You can get it from salmon, oily fish, and so on and so forth. But fat, as crazy as it sounds, doesn't make you fat just because you're eating something called fat. What makes you fat is because you're eating way too many calories than what you need. That is it. Now, obviously, if you were going to look at your diet and realize, oh my gosh, my fat is really high, that's a great thing to try and take down because most fatty foods are high in calories and you don't want to drop protein for obvious reasons. But no, just because you have fat in your diet doesn't mean it's all going to store as the fat that you hate. And in fact, all kinds of foods do if you are eating too much of them. Number 16 is, should I eat everything to get all muscly? I mean, on one hand, yes, it will work, but you're also going to put on a lot of bad weight. So you need to decide what exactly you're trying to achieve. There is a thing called dirty bulking, which is where you just get your calories in by hook or by crook. And as long as you're kicking ass at the gym, you will see some months of muscle, well, I guess evolution, evolution progress. But when you come to getting rid of all of this weight, or at least the weight they don't want, you may find out that you put on a load of, again, bad weight, fat weight that you didn't want to do, and your muscle growth isn't as special, <laughs> I'm talking to you, as you would have first hoped, which is why I think not dirty bulking is better. But also, no, you don't need to be putting away 5,000 calories just in order to develop muscles. It may turn out that you are that person, but start slow. So figure out what you're eating at the moment. Let's say it's 2,000 calories. Just move it up to 2,100 calories for the week. Then move it up to 2,200, 2,300. Keep making these tiny increments until you can look at yourself in the mirror over a prolonged period and go, oh my gosh, I'm now making 
making gains. Too many people go from 2,000 calories to 5,000 calories and your body can't handle it. And also, you just, you're never going to know where you do need to even out. This stuff takes time. I know you don't want to hear that. You want to have abs in five minutes. You ain't getting them unless you draw them on. Number 15 is, are squats bad for my knee? I mean, potentially, yes. But potentially, no. This is why you want to invest in good form, as we've already talked about, and you, why you want to protect yourself. So don't wait until your knees start to get bad. Buy some knee wraps. Buy some knee straps, whatever they're called. Knee sock thingamajigs. I can't, I can't remember what they're called now. It will pop into my head in a minute. Sleeves. There it is. Buy some knee sleeves. If you're worried about being injured, just take preventative measures. Do yoga. Make sure you're stretching after your workouts. Treat your muscle like you would treat a child. If you are doing squats properly, should your knee start to hurt? No, of course not. But you're a human being. That's like, if you play football, should you get injured? No, but sometimes you do. So accept that it could happen. Understand what a great exercise squat is for building overall mass, but especially in your legs. And if you do unfortunately get hurt, just make sure you take the steps not to do it again. But don't just not do squats because you're terrified about your knees exploding. It's kind of a crappy excuse. Number 14 is how much protein should I eat? And of course, the answer is you have to figure it out. But a very good rule of thumb, or at least somewhere to start, if you've never done this before and you're a brand and new beginner, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you'll be taking in 200 grams of protein. Yes, maybe you need a little bit more, but it goes back again if we rewind time back to the future. Start there, and if it's not doing what you want it to do, then increase it. There's what you want really in, in all walks of life, you want to find the minimal lowest possible of anything where you are seeing results and keep it there. You don't want to be pushing the limits too much because A, you don't know how it's going to impact you in other areas, but B, it always costs more when you get to that point so keep everything cool and low. Number 13 is how many calories should I eat? This one I would literally retroactively fit around what you're doing right now. Annoyingly, I've just said this, so I now have to say it again. Work out what your current diet is. Get rid of all the crap. Insert some healthy food and try and figure out. So if you're having 2,000 calories of bad food, Make yourself a diet where you're having 2,000 calories of good food. So out go the crisps and in come sweet potato. I don't know. There's better foods than that, but these are the ones that come to my mind. Do that for a little while. You're going to feel better. You're going to start looking better. And then decide, right, what do I need to do? And if you need to lose some fat, you need to drop some calories. And if you want to increase the muscle size, you need to add some calories. Now, again, that could be 2,500. It could be 3,500. Maybe it is 9,200 because you're seven foot four and built like a bear. But I just don't think there is a number for this. And you can't actually find numbers on the internet. Well, if you wait this much you need this much. you don't know you do not know figure out where you're at now and then slowly just back away and then move forward and you'll make sense number 12 is how much time should i have between sets two minutes there you go there's a nice figure for you to work towards but surprise surprise when you're in that two minutes if you're really really trying to achieve muscle hypertrophy and you think man if i just wait an extra 20 seconds i'm gonna smash this set even more you should do it but if you get to 45 seconds or a minute 15 you think oh man i've got the energy today i know i can do another one then you should do another one but mostly two minutes is a good thing to aim for but do not forget if you're going after one rep maxes or you're a strong man or you're just doing super duper heavy lifts it's okay to wait four five six seven eight minutes because your whole training is geared i mean strong men all know this anyway but your whole training is geared towards that one massive lift that you're going to be doing in a competition so you don't need to be worrying about three sets eight to twelve reps that's not going to help you at all whereas if you're more of an aesthetic dude and you want to do the whole bodybuilding stuff Bob's your uncle. Number 11 is, should I take creatine? Yes. Yes, you should. You should give it a go. Start with 2.5 grams a day. Move it up to 5 grams a day. Creatine monohydrate. You can just buy a nice simple one. You don't need to go too crazy with it. Can it bloat you? Absolutely. Does it come with some very minimal side effects? Yes. But it does upset some people's stomach. So if you do increase creatine and then all of a sudden you don't feel good, just get rid of it again. But it's a very... Most people think steroids. Especially your parents. It's not steroids. It's not steroids. You can buy it from anywhere. But it is going to give you that extra 1-2% of the gym. And it's one of the very few supplements that has gone through rigorous testing and actually shows this is something that is positive to take. So try it again. Start 2.5 grams for a week. Oh, I feel like I need a bit more. You move it up to five. Some people actually need more than five, but really five grams is a ballpark figure well, it's the ties back into what we just said. You're not all of a sudden going to get a bunch of terrible side effects from it, which is what you never want. Number 10 is, are BCAAs any good? And it really depends on what you want to take BCAAs for. If you have a healthy diet that's high in protein, do you need branched chain amino acids or even essential amino acids? Obviously, essential ones are better than branched chain amino ones. No, no, you don't. You are essentially paying a lot of money for a fruity drink 
and you're not getting any benefit from it because you're already receiving it from other areas. However, like my good self, I like how BCAAs taste. <laughs> so if you like how BCAAs taste and you don't mind buying it here and there, then you should absolutely should. But it's not some kind of miracle drink. You're not going to take it and all of a sudden turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's just not true. Thanks for the tip. I like consuming some before I do fasted workout. Comments melt down because we can't talk about any kind of fasted workout or fasted cardio, I should say, without people going absolutely crazy and then go, but it's not fast if you take BCAAs. I know, but I'm not, there's no rule book. I'm not, I'm not murdering anybody. There's no law. It's what I like to do. And BCAAs just give me some thing in my head where I go, well, I know I'm preventing muscle breakdown for the reasons of what BCAAs are just to begin with. You can do this. You cannot do this. You can have a cup of coffee, but you fasted workout. It really doesn't matter. But no, if you can't afford them, you don't need them. Which ties into number nine fasted or non-fasted cardio do whatever the hell you want now if you are going to be an enhanced athlete and again there's far better channels to check out because i'm not an enhanced athlete even though no one believes me <sighs> boring 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 then yes there can actually be benefits from doing fasted cardio but i'm going to assume most people watching this are not enhanced athletes just get your cardio in so if you have decided to do 45 minutes of cardio three times a week you can do it first thing on an empty stomach you can do it last thing at night when you've eaten the world you can do it in the middle of the day you can do it at 11 32 there is no real positive or negatives as long as you get it done the only negative is when you don't get it done because you haven't got it done and yes you can do too much cardio as well but i guess it's probably better to do too much cardio than not enough cardio well it depends on what your goals are my number one goal is this to protect my heart and make sure i'm healthy i think that's the most important part of health and fitness but of course i want to make progress in other areas as well so i find that sweet spot for my cardio and given how my days are i've got a lot of videos to record and bada bing bada boom and i want to go to the gym in the evening i get my cardio out of the way first thing because then if my day does get away from me i don't just not do it and of course if i get to 7 p.m and i've still got 45 minutes of cardio <laughs> i hate doing it i'm bored number eight is do i need to work out every day I suppose this ties into one of the earlier questions but no no you don't i guess the reason i will probably put it here is because i found it on the internet but also because there's a very specific reason for this and that's because you grow and you get better almost when you are recovering and when you are resting. It's why sleep is so important. You want to be aiming for at least seven hours of sleep a day. I'm a hypocrite. Do I get seven hours a day? No, but I try, but my body hates me and I just can't sleep. But if you do not get that rest and recovery, you're not going to be making the gains and the progress that you want because you're not allowing your body, I always say this, to get back to zero. So let's say zero is just your normal, right? When you kick your body's ass in the gym, you drop down to a negative 10, let's say, right? Because you're stressed and your cortisol levels are hard and you've ripped open the muscle fibers. Now you want to repair all of that and get Get back to zero and you do that with food and you do that with rest and so many people do forego sleep and i get it because it can be hard if you're getting four hours aim for six hours if you're getting six hours aim for seven hours if you can get the wonderful eight hours you are living the damn dream quite literally because you'll be sleeping and you'll be dreaming away but it wasn't a dream it was a place and you and you and you and you were there but do not think that doing another back workout, even though you don't need to do another back workout, has more benefit than resting just because resting sounds like you're not working hard. You are. It counts. And you should be happy that it counts. You get to sit on your ass. Number seven is, does DOMS hurt? DOMS stands for delayed onset muscle soreness, and it is the feeling you get after you have had a good workout and you've broken the muscle fibers down. Now, you are not always going to have DOMS. And some people decide they don't have DOMS, they haven't had a good workout. That's not true at all. Sometimes you're going to have crazy DOMS, and sometimes you won't have DOMS at all. I wouldn't say that it hurts. I mean, at first, you're going to feel like you've been whacked by a bus because your body isn't used for the, to the stress you're about to put it under. But no, I mean, personally for me, I like how DOMS feels because again, if I flex my bicep and I can feel it in the bicep, I'm like, oh, I've done a good job, even though that's absolutely nonsense science in my head. But it doesn't hurt, no. It's not a bad pain. It's a good pain. And I guess the best way to sum it up is you'll be able to tell a very big difference between, oh no, I've hurt a tendon or I've injured something and oh, I think I've got DOMS. Sometimes when you get DOMS in your legs, it's hard to walk up the stairs and you're like a crab, but crabs are great. So what's the problem? Number six is how long does it take to see results? It could be two years. I mean, it could be six months. If you're very lucky, it could be a couple of weeks before you can actually look in the mirror and go, oh my gosh, I'm starting to shape up. This is the one thing that everybody who lifts weights needs to understand. It just takes forever. And I know you don't want to hear that, especially when the fitness industry is throwing all of these supplements and programs and equipment at you that say that they can transform your body in seven days, 14 days, 28 days. And it's a great thing to get on if it's going to keep you focused. But when you get to the end of that month, don't lose your motivation and focus because it didn't work. Just understand it was a marketing ploy to get you through the door to begin with. Stay on track, keep going. And I promise you, if you're working out hard in the gym and you're eating right and you are doing all the things that you need to do, your physique and your body and your mental well-being will be better eventually. But if you don't do it, it's like the classic slogan. You can only get on the game if you're on the bench. When it comes to the gym and seeing results, 
You just got to go and get it done. Number five is, should I lift heavy to build muscle? I mean, yes, that's a pretty good way to do it because of course, if you are lifting heavier and heavier weights, it stands to reasons that your muscles are getting bigger and bigger. It doesn't always work that way. It's not like a one-to-one -one thing, but it's a pretty good piece of evidence because if you could lift 10 kilograms on day one and then on day 522, you can do 30 kilograms or well, something must have grown and something must have developed. Otherwise, how the hell else are you doing it? But this also ties into number four, which is, should I do lightweights and high reps in order to get cut or toned? My most livid word ever, you are not a printer. And I do understand the logic of changing things up because your body does get used to a certain routine and you do need to keep the body guessing. But I'm talking about 8, 12, sometimes even 16 weeks. You don't change it up every single week. But when you do go to lift weights, the worst thing you can do is all of a sudden sacrifice your strength because you're not going to be able to tell if you're keeping your muscle. So if you're doing a 200 kilogram deadlift and then all of a sudden for six reps, and then all of a sudden you say, oh, I'm going to do 100 kilograms for 14, 15 reps now. Well, six weeks down the line, when maybe you're worried about your weight on the scales or how you're looking, you don't know if you've cut into muscle because you weren't doing the same lift. So always shake things up. Yes, always make sure you're ahead of the game. You're ahead of your own body. But don't do drastic things ever, especially when you're about to go into a calorie deficit. That is the worst time to do it. So this whole day of, should I lift heavy to build muscle and vice versa or doing the opposite? It's just old bro science. It's not how it works. It's far too complicated for it to just fit in this nice little package. Number three is, do I have to train legs? Genuine one, when I typed in most common questions for working out, one of the highest ones was, do I need to train legs i mean the answer is actually no you don't but if you want to be johnny bravo johnny bravo is brilliant hello 911 emergency there's a handsome guy in my house oh <laughs> wait a second cancel that it's only me then you're going to have to train legs. And also do not forget when you train legs, because they're such a big muscle group, it kind of sends testosterone only a little bit around your whole body. So you will see advances in other areas, but just do them. If you don't want to squat, just use the machines. You can do leg extensions, you can do calf raises, you can do hamstring curls. It makes you a little bit of a baby. And I don't like working legs, but trust me, when you start seeing development there, you're going to want to keep working legs. Number two is, should I have a cheat day? Do you need a cheat day? Do you want a cheat day? Is knowing that you're going to have a lovely meal on Saturday evening what you require in order to stick to your diet on those six and a half other days? And if the answer is yes, smash that cheat day. Now, if you're training for a bodybuilding competition or some kind of photo shoot where you need to be super duper lean, you're probably going to have to sacrifice these cheat days depending on your metabolism. But it depends really, you know, what you are doing here and there. I think the best way when it comes to cheat days is to make sure you have a diet that is so good, so sustainable that you don't actually crave other food because you're enjoying what you're eating. A surprise, surprise, you can do that with a healthy diet but i also get it too cheese is great pizza's great burgers are great hot dogs are great they make you happy they make you want to do a backflip if you are just trying to stay fit and you're just trying to have a healthy lifestyle i don't see anything wrong with going out for a meal once a week twice a week whatever fits your schedule if you want to be a bit more intense you know you can cut them out but they are not going to kill you. They are not going to stop you to get in from where you want to go, unless, of course, you're going for that extreme 1%. But, of course, when you are going to the extreme 1%, you do have to sacrifice more because that's just how life works. And number one is what diet is the best? And I've kind of fudged this one a little bit, but it's basically, should I do keto diet? Should I do Atkins? Should I do no carbs? Should I do high protein? Should I do intermittent fasting? And there's pros and cons to all of them. I like traditional bodybuilding diet. You eat every two to three hours, you eat your protein, your carbs, and your fats, and all of this. And there's certain science to say you don't even have to do that either but I like doing it and it makes me encouraged to go to the gym. If you want to try keto, which is when you have a high fat, high protein diet, do it. If you want to try no carb, I'm always a little bit worried about no carb because eventually you are going to reintroduce carbs and sometimes bodies go a little bit crazy. I suppose it's the same as a keto diet. Just be careful with it is what I'm saying. Intermittent fasting, I think is great. Doesn't work for me because I get hungry and irritable because <laughs> I'm that kind of a guy, but there are benefits to it as well. Sometimes it actually shows a po more positive hormone profile, I guess, is the best way to talk about it. And we can discuss that on a future video. The only wrong diet is eating a bunch of crap. If you're eating healthy food, the way you kind of get it into your system, it doesn't really matter. And it's true, and nobody wants to hear that. But that's once more why you're getting all these diets thrown at you. Because you'll try one diet, it doesn't work. So you try another diet, you try another diet, you try another diet. You think one of these diets is going to transform you in a week. It's not. You've got to be, well, you've got to keep up with these things, which is why I like eating every two to three hours. It gives me something to be excited about because I'm a massive child. And yes, I look forward to eating. So there you go, the most common 20 workout questions answered. I probably missed a few because, you know, I can't do them all. And also, YouTube videos can't go on forever. Although maybe they can. I think the limit is like 10 hours. 
Maybe one day we'll do a 10 hour video. Now, please do like the video, share the video and subscribe to the bell. Ding, ding. So you know other videos are going live. There is another video on the screen. Why don't you give it a click? Patreon.com for Simon316. If you want to support me that way on Twitter, Instagram at Simon316. The Greg Doucette Power 13 cookbook talking about diets. Use the link in the description below. Use the code Simon15, get 15% off and actually eat things that you want to eat. Otherwise, SimonMiller.BigCartel.com for merchandise. Stock is still there. I got a few more t-shirts in, so hopefully it lasts a few more weeks. But honestly, thank you so much for all the support. And and I'll see you on the next one.